right, so welcome everyone to LinkedIn Local. We are live today. It's been a minute. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to cover a conversation that I think needs to be taught in school. <laughs> But as adults, we are going to try to learn these things brand new and hopefully um, our guests will have the responsibility and I know he doesn't take it lightly, so he'll share all his insight. But before we get into that, make sure to follow us on LinkedIn. If you haven't already, sign up for our notifications because we're always looking for volunteers as well as folks who are in search of a little exposure for their business because you have access to the blogging and you have access to our audience as well. So we are across the Caribbean and feel free to message me if you want insight into that. We also have Barbados events coming up. Once you follow the LinkedIn local page on LinkedIn, you will learn about the next event because I'm pretty certain they have um, about two more called for the for this month. All right, so Housekeeping masters aside, today we have uh, Phil, Phil the Gap, <laughs> right? And he's going to share some insights on stock um, across the Caribbean because, you know, it's a global economy, right? So it's not just one single um, island. So Phil, you want to do a quick introduction? Sure, no problem. So let me say good, good evening everyone um, happy to have the opportunity to share uh, this conversation with you today discussion on stocks um, things that you should know in school uh, just a little bit about Phil the Gap. Phil the Gap is uh, a company that I formed that's really passionate about closing the gap in financial literacy and helping people make the best moves that they can make with their money that's it in a nutshell and I've been doing it uh, since around 20 16 2017 so that is what phil the gap is about i am phil and again i am delighted to share with you today awesome so we're gonna what we're gonna do is have a presentation we want to get some clear um you know see what phil is seeing because obviously when it comes to a new subject it gets a little harder for us to learn stuff so it'll be nice to have a visual element and once he's finished with that presentation, we have some Q&A sessions. A lot of you guys did fill out the registration already, so we have those questions, but feel free to slide into Q&A uh, if you have more questions. So without further ado, um, we have, I'm not seeing your screen. So. Oh, okay, so there was the intro. Okay, let me just, so I'll start yeah. and then I'll start to share. So I just have a, so it's, you ready to go? Time to go? Yeah, yeah. Go it's ahead. Go, it's good time. All right. We're, we just, we're just going straight into we're it because it's late and listen, people. <laughs> so, yeah. In, in investing in the stock market uh, is only something for the big businessmen or people with deep pockets, right? Wrong. And in case you didn't know, um, I want you to know that your small to medium sized business is actually big business. And if you have any doubt about that, let me say this. Uh, the, the Central Statistics Office states that small to medium sized businesses contribute roughly 30% of Trinidad and Tobago GDP. But if we're talking about the CARICOM region, according to the statistics from the CARICOM Secretariat, SMEs contribute about 40% of the region's GDP. And if the term GDP or gross domestic product seems more related to the wider economy as opposed to directly to you. Remember, I'm just talking about the dollar value of all the finished goods and services within Trinidad and Tobago or the CARICOM region. Um, just for Trinidad, let me just say the most recent number from the Minister of Finance that was read in the Media Review, that is $170 billion. So collectively, you represent a significant portion of that $170 billion, which means, I'm saying this again, your small to medium-sized business is big business for Trinidad and Tobago, and not just Trinidad and Tobago, but the Caribbean economy. I also want you to know that when it comes to your personal finances, you are big business, and your big business, you are the business, sorry, right? And that is big business. So 
any big business, you should have policies and just not to confuse things that just means rules or guidelines for certain decisions. You know, for example, what do you do when you get paid? You know, after you, after expenses are paid, what's allocated for savings? You know, what kind of retail earnings? How much is allocated for investment? Um, so that, as again, I want you to look at yourself as, you know, as I said, personal finance, just as a country has to manage finances a certain way. Businesses have to manage themselves a certain way from a financial standpoint. Personal finance is, is no different. So investing in stocks is for you uh, because you're a big business, right? Um, and again, so the theme for today is should you be investing in stocks as a business owner? An exciting opportunity for you to just get a sense as to what is investing, some of the considerations, what are stocks, what is the stock market, how do you invest? That's the discussion that we're gonna have today. Um, and I'm going to share, I'm going to share my screen now. Yeah, so while you, um, once you've shared the screen, I will add the, here yeah, we go. Yeah. yeah. And. What do you think? Can you see? Yeah, I'm going to. There we go. And you're good to go. Okay, great. So. In terms of what is investing, I know many times you when we, we're talking about investing cash and investing in stocks today, but many times you've heard about investing in other things other than money and it's because the framework is same. So I just want you to know investing is committing resources. In this case, the resources would be cash uh, to an endeavor or thing. Um, and in this case, it would be stocks and with the expectation of a positive outcome or a positive return that is investing. I know there are lots of things out there. Um, you hear about people trading and sometimes you hear about quick money and things happening overnight. Investing is a disciplined approach, long game. Um, and once you stay consistent, that's you can win at um, this game. So investing is very different to trading. Trading is being in and out of the stock market, which I will explain for short term gains. Investing is more long term with having a goal um, down the road, something that you're thinking about. So there's nothing wrong, let me just say, with, with trading, you can make money, but it's very important to distinguish between investing um, and trading. In terms of what are some of the things, right, before you start investing or investing in stocks, I know a lot of times I think there's the, there's that anxiousness, you know, to get started. I want to invest in stocks. I want to start to make money. One of the, you know, things that the first things you have to do before you start investing is a financial health check. I want to say that it's just, you know, how much debt do you have? Do you have funds set aside for an emergency? Um, what about, you know, critical illness? Uh, you know, are you on solid footing? Because Putting, getting ahead of yourself and starting to invest because of how stocks work and because of how the stock market works can be very, it may not be in your best interest. So a financial health check is very, very important. Where are you exactly in terms of are you comfortable that you have sufficient emergency money um, and all of the things that you need before you start investing money? Um, another thing, what is the goal? Because it's important to know if you have long term goals, you don't want to put your you don't want to put that into an asset that is short term. You have to have some kind of direction in terms of where exactly are you going. So having the goal or goals, and I mean there are many different places that you could, you know, goals to stash cash for the long term. It could be retirement, starting a business, starting another business, a home, a second home, um, an emergency fund. There are different types of goals, but it's important to know what the goal is because that's how you will know where you need to position your cash. When exactly do you need this money? Because you're committing resources. This is the resource that you're committing. When do you need this money? So you have to plan ahead. I will advise that you plan ahead in terms of 12, 18 months ahead in terms of what your cash needs are. That's just another way for saying liquidity, how much cash you would need because the market goes, stock markets go up and it goes down. What you don't want, I don't know, you might be seeing what's happening in the global economy and what's happening in the US stock market right now. What you don't want is that, you know, you purchase a stock, you make an investment and the investment goes down and you need cash. So it's important. You, you don't want to be making a decision based on emotion. So these are things that you need to consider. When, you know, when would you need this money that you're committing? And if you have sufficient cash, oh, very important. How do you feel about risk? So if you invested 
in, in something, it costs a dollar, and tomorrow or next week it's 95 cents. How are you, you going to feel in your stomach? Is that something that you could deal with? Um, and keep in mind, very important, not because a stock or investment goes down, it means that it's a bad investment, right? The stock market moves in, in cycles just as the economy moves in cycles. It's like one thing is for sure, it goes up, it goes down, it goes back up. That has been the history of the stock market. So it's important to determine how you feel about risk. Um, so there are risk tolerance questionnaires because that, you know, that's important for you to know uh, to be exactly what you're getting into before you start investing and how involved you want to be. Some people have the time and there are lots of tools out there. There's a lot of information out there um, on the Internet, on YouTube and different sources um, to provide you with the resources you need. Uh, if you want to start learning about investing. Some people just don't have the time, they can't be bothered. So if that's the case, it's important that you have someone who can guide you along the way before you make an investment. There's no such thing. Get, if it sounds too good to be true, and uh, you something that you're going to commit resources that is going to double or quadruple in, in the next night or the next couple of days, sounds too good to be true, probably it, it, it is, that's a problem. So there are lots of those things out there, so be very careful. So if when you start, before you start investing, make sure you have proper advice from a professional to guide you along the way. So these are some of the things that you would consider. Now, what is a stock? Very simple. There are two ways that you can raise capital. One is by borrowing. The fancy word for that in the financial markets would be a bond, but today we're focusing on stocks. And the other way is with stocks. So businesses, I'll use the example of this mini mart or a gross, you know, mini mart or grocery chain. Let's say there's this family business. Um, it's been around for a while and it's had some money saved and they want to expand to a supermarket or, you know, have a supermarket chain. They have about half, half a million, let's say they have half a million dollars, they have 500,000. When they assess the situation, they realize, listen, you know, they need about a million dollars to take on this grocery project. Um, they don't want to go to the bank either. They don't want to go to the bank or the bank is not going to give them any money. So they go to five friends and each of these five friends give them a hundred thousand dollars. So now they have the million dollars to do this, this project. So with stocks, um, companies are raising capital uh, to expand and to be able to do business. Now what's happening is that the family Minimart has given up 50% of their ownership to these five friends. So the friends own 10% each, the family remains with the 50%. Um, percent. Just as the Minimart generated profits over the years, the grocery chain more than likely will generate profits and the friends, because they have 10% uh, of this, you know, the million dollars, they get their entitled to a 10% return and sharing of profits, that is called dividends. So again, it's just, with stocks, you are companies are raising capital. So just in the same way, what I want you to think about um, the stock market, you know, the same way these this minimart was able to raise finances and get access to capital, it's the same way. And I've listed some of these brands. It's the same way on the local stock exchange. Companies go um, and issue shares to raise capital so that they can expand and do business. And if you're thinking about, sorry, if you're thinking about, you know, how, let me just break down how the stock market works. I want you to just think now, like use the example of the mini mart or grocery chain. Um, just think on a much bigger level and by investing in stocks, let's say these are mainly companies on the local stock exchange, but some of them are throughout the Caribbean as well. You have access to dividends, you have access to the profits of these companies. So the heading there says consumer investor. You can be both. Most times, so if you taken a loan from the bank, if you building a house, you're buying bricks, you're building cement, if you purchasing beverages, it depends on you know the purchase from these entities, you are a consumer. But these companies are also listed on regional and local stock exchange. And by investing, you have the opportunity to share in this profit, these profits, some, some of the strongest companies in the region. So I just want you to said, think about on a very broad level. So the stock market, these companies here would come to the market and they're going to sell some shares to expand. What's going to happen? This is called an initial public offering, an IPO. And 
So the initial owners have their holding these shares. So you might say, well, OK, if all these shares are bought up, how would I be able to get shares? Well, you know, let's say you bought a share and it was a dollar and it went up to two dollars. You might want to cash in and another investor or potential investor might want to purchase that share that has now gone to two dollars and they would do that in the secondary market because you want to sell and they have the belief that this company is going to continue doing well and going to continue making profits and possibly move to three dollars and that is the stock market investors and people buying pieces of companies based on the belief or based on their conviction or based on their analysis in terms of where the company is going to go in the future and that's how the stock market works. And these are companies that you can invest in here. You can be a consumer as well as an investor. So that was more as it's the more mechanical aspect. The reason I have this up here is because what's happening in the economy right now and the stock market is linked to the economy. So generally, um, the stock market is a leading indicator of how the economy is performing. So when the economy is doing well, businesses are doing well people might be taking more loans people might be, have more confidence to, to, to spend money once people are spending money businesses are making money and that generates profits and shareholders like that and people may be buying more shares so the economy goes up and it goes down the stock market also goes up and it goes down i know this chart might look complicated i just want to remind you investing is not as complicated as it seems there's a lot of fancy stuff up out there, but a long-term investor, when you purchase a stock, uh, doesn't mean that you don't have to monitor it every, you know, you could monitor it how much you want, whether it's a daily, weekly, monthly, but generally, if your view is long-term, you wouldn't be frantically looking at it every day. You wouldn't do that. So the stock market is not as complicated. If you have a company that is a valuable company that you're gonna hold for three, five, um, possibly 10 years, 15 years, then you are less concerned about the movement in the market up and down. You actually will be looking for opportunities to buy when the stock market goes down. So when the stock market goes down, it's actually a great opportunity to buy valuable companies or get a company that is what the terminology will be undervalued. Kind of like the best way to explain that is buying a dollar for 50 cents. It's buying an asset that is, is valued cheaper, but it's cheaper, sorry, but the value is really a lot higher than it is. So the stock market also fluctuates based on the economic cycle. Um, but generally, over time, the long term trend of the stock market is up. That's generally what you know where it, it has been. The stock market has trended up over time. Um, what I have here is this is these are the returns of the local well, the Trinidad and Tobago stock exchange. Um, the TT, the all the composite index and the oil TNT index from since inception. So you've seen from 1984. So this really just gives the hard actual data in terms of what the returns have been on an annual basis. You're going to see some years are up, some years are down. But what I want you to focus on is this number right here is 8.1. Let's see if I can move this and this number down here, which is the average, the long-term, the long-term average. And I'll show you why um, coming down to the end. So pay attention to this 8.1, very important. So just remember, it, it goes up, it goes down, but generally uh, the trend over the long-term is up. And I just wanted to give a more, uh, like a more real life example, not that, so you had, those are real, those are the actual returns for the TT stock exchange let's say um you purchase republic bank shares and let me just start by saying this is not a recommendation to buy republic bank shares i must let you know this this is just an example real life example of what the returns have been um just you know to demonstrate for you in terms of what the returns have been so over if you bought republic bank shares and held for five years your return would be 37 percent over a 10-year period just under 50 over a 20-year period 300 percent um year to date meaning if you bought at the beginning of the year um january 1st 2022 to and you held until the end of april the return would be um minus 0.11 right now so not again not the best return for the year. However, uh, Republic Bank has consistently generated profits. They recently released their numbers, um, half year numbers at the end of 
to the end of March, and they made over $700 million um, in profits, and they were able to declare a dividend, which will be paid out to shareholders, I believe, in May. So there's a real life example of returns. Uh, there's several, as I said, the list of the um, brands you would have seen about those companies are listed on the stock exchange, and those are companies that you can purchase as well. In terms of what I know that we spent a lot of time focusing on, on Trinidad and Tobago, I've also outlined the returns for the Jamaican Stock Exchange and the Bajan Stock Exchange for a five, 10 year and 20 year period as well as the year-to-date returns. The charts at the bottom is really just a reflection of what you're seeing in the green and the red. So something in red is a negative return, so you're seeing Barbados, the index is in negative return. And when it's, and don't be confused by the word index. Index is just like a basket, a basket of stocks that replicate something. So the TT index replicates the trends that they go stock market. Um, so these are the respective indices uh, for Barbados, Jamaica, and Trinidad. And you would see that the Jamaican Stock Exchange had a return of 950%, um, the five-year return, or three, the 10-year return, 339, and the five-year return, 73%. So these are actual numbers um, to give you uh, a sense as to what you can. Now, history doesn't, numbers are not guaranteed, which is why I focused on the 8.1 and what the long-term average would be, because some years are going to be better um, than others. So why focused on the, the 8.1? This is an investment calculator. Really what this slide just speaks to, the value of time and, and how long you are invested in the markets. And it's really about also compounding interest. So pay attention to this number here, this 1.5 million. So this, let's say you started Let's say someone started investing at 20. And again, this is an example. You don't have to be 20, but I'm giving you an example in terms of what, how important time is. Let's say you started investing and you know, your starting amount was 1,000. So after 30 years, and the, this, at this 8.1, which is the long-term average of investing in stocks, you did this monthly and you contributed $1,000 monthly, you would have 1.5 million, right? The reason why I say time is so important, someone who started investing at 30, same 1,000, you investing for 20 years, same 8.1, you only have 600,000. So you are giving up a whole lot of upside. The longer you take to start investing, um, the more time that you're giving up. So once you, the longer you're in the market, you give yourself more opportunity to generate returns. So I know that there were questions to um, also to just to discuss where would you go, where exactly do you go to to start to invest? Um, the Toronto Tobago Stock Exchange website is an excellent resource. There's a list there of seven brokers. Um, there's seven brokers listed in Toronto Tobago. A broker will vary based on you know the type of service that they offer, but you must have a brokerage account to be able to buy, to purchase the shares, those companies that was, that I listed earlier or that, that was up on the screen. You should have a brokerage account. Um, that is your starting point, obviously, before you've done your financial health check and taken into consideration if investing in stocks is, is a good thing for you or the right thing, I should say, for you. Um, you go, or there's a lot of information in terms of the prices, um, how you can start, how you can register, uh, all of the information there too on the brokers, the contact information. So that is a good starting place in terms of how do you know if a stock is a good stock? Well, that's like a whole lesson. But what I will tell you is, you know, the same way, think about when you're purchasing a company, you want to know what's their level of profitability? How much debt do they have? Are they really managing, you know, their debt? You know, could they really, you know, could the business stay afloat? How liquid are they? Do they have sufficient cash? Um, and you know, is the company fairly valued? Those are four main areas that you look at, as well as, as I said, I think I mentioned the profitability. So it's really you looking at what the story is of this company. When you buy a stock, you are really paying for management. The numbers are going to give pain to pity as well, but you're really paying for management and you're looking back to see how the company has performed and that will give you a gauge in terms of how the company could possibly perform in the future. 
and I did mention also, so it's, it's very important for you to have someone who can guide you before you don't take advice from a friend or don't take just take some tip on a whim because that's a sure way to run into problems. You can lose a lot of the hard, you know, the money that you work very hard for that you could just lose it very easily. Um, I'm just thinking that, you know, I'm going to make this investment because someone told me. Um, they also, as I said, in terms of finding out information about stocks, if you follow Philly Gap, um, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, on Twitter, I post Monday to Friday. Um, I'm also available by direct message and you can DM me and, and ask questions. I do respond. I might respond immediately, but I would respond. Um, I talk about different things, whether it's the economy, stocks, bonds. So um, Fill the Gap is also a resource to get information on investing. And yeah, end of my presentation. So thank you. Awesome. Should I, should I that sharing? was yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. You're good there. So that was pretty good. I I have some questions in addition to a list of questions from previously um, from the registered people. Thanks so much for sharing your information. Um, and, you know, you mentioned this, I, this thing of it, if it's too good to be true. And I feel like we need to expand on that a little bit because sure. we are in a society that everything's fast, everything's quick. You know, you watch TikTok and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could do this. And you feel this sense of security and trust with people that you follow and they're giving you this quick information. So what kind of actions do you suggest a user take when they see all these, you know, gurus because they're dime a dozen? What are the steps we should take to, to secure our coin? Because ultimately, you know, everything's risk, but you want to reduce that risk. Yeah, so if you, so the mindset is this. What if you could do a background check, which sometimes is very, it's difficult, but you want to know if you're taking advice from someone, um, someone is, that they really have the capacity to point you in the right direction, but trust your senses as well. If you are starting to ask yourself, well, how, how, how are these returns generated? And it's a good thing to, to probably ask. Um, the presenter or the person, whoever is getting this information, a good question to ask is how are these returns generated? What are the assets driving these returns? And that's a good starting point. So they should be able to say, well, you know, the this investment is in, invested in crypto, it's invested in bonds, it's invested in stocks, it's invested in mutual funds, it's invested in commodities, gold. There are different types of investments but they should be able to tell you whether it's invested in this. Then you can also look back and see, well, okay, generally, just as I pointed you to say, listen, the long term, the, the return on the stock market is around 8%. These assets also have a long term average in terms of what their return should be. So if these returns are astronomical, like shooting through the roof, like how is that possible? And with risk again, yes, you know, some people are quite risk averse and they're not going to take any risk. So I, I would say this, there's risk in not taking risk. There's a price to pay for that, but there's also um, risk in taking risk that you don't understand, risk that is not calculated. So ask pointed questions in terms of what's backing the investment, what is the asset and what is really driving the returns. Somebody who knows what they're about will be able to tell you exactly um, what the investment is, what's the average return, what you should expect. If it's too good to be true, if you're talking three, four, five, six hundred percent in like some days or, or weeks, highly likely that there's something very, very spooky there. So, and if you don't, if you, if you don't um, feel confident in terms of what the response is or confident, because that those are very good questions to ask. But if you don't feel confident in terms of what you know the response and the, then you run it by someone who has the experience to say, well, hey, you know, that really doesn't make sense. And you could be putting your capital at risk. So just, you know, please look before you leap. You know, we'll just jump in because because as I said, it doesn't if it if it if it's overnight, and usually too, that's the pitch. The pitch is the pitch is usually about all of the upside, all of the money that you can make. If there's never any conversation about what's the risk involved, 
and what the potential downside could be, that's a red flag as well, because that's somebody trying to entice you into something that is probably not the best thing for you. That's some good advice. And, you know, we tend to trust people first and then make decisions after. But based on what you're saying, it's it's something that you have to have different touch points before making a decision. And um, just FYI, I've been putting the some links into the Q&A section. So I put the Stock Exchange, Trinidad and Barbados. I'm not going to put Jamaica because it doesn't have a secure link and I really don't want to be responsible for that. So just Google that on your own if you wish to do that. Now, when it comes to this stock market, which is just basically flooded with, you know, news and people like Elon Musk, how is it important to keep up to date with the news and stock exchange? What's the what's the collaboration there? It's important. I mean, sometimes the news can be noise. Sometimes the news um, is entertainment. So. The news also keeps you abreast, but sometimes it's not as important in terms of what's really important is understanding. Um, so not necessarily Elon Musk, but you know whether it's, it's whatever the company is, understanding whatever it is you're investing in, it's more important to pay attention to that. Um, the news will give you a sense in terms of the general direction. So if you're following the news now, you know that the US stock market has been under some pressure, a lot of volatility, and not just the US stock market, global stock market. So that's you know, indicate in terms of where things are, it might show you to be like, okay, this may be a good time to invest because I might be able to get some valuable companies or it might be like, okay, I was thinking about investing, but now may not be the time because the market might go further. You're going to get that type of information on the news. But what's very, very, very important is to drill deeper. The news is surface. So it's good information, um, good to stay on top of it. It keeps you abreast, keeps you sharp, very good. But what's more important is understanding exactly what you're investing in and what what's the risk involved. So for those who may have dropped um, join us late, you would have mentioned, you know, this sort of analytical approach to investing, meaning, OK, am I covering all my bills? Do I have disposable income? And as a small business owner myself, you know, it took a, a while, but I, I reach a point where I can actually pay people and not be sweating every month. Um, and when we had the lockdown, I actually had some US in an account and it literally made no money for two years during COVID. I feel pained just mentioning that. Um, but I say that to say when exactly is the right time? Because obviously there's no exact time, but you know, when you are in this stage of just paying your bills, just getting by, you know, are you thinking, oh, should I be investing now? Right. So the right time, once you've established, so so to be very clear, that's a good question as a starting point. If you don't have any funds set aside for emergency, you should not be investing in stock. So you should not be trying to invest your way to get that foundation. You should take your time and be diligent on a, monthly basis, but it is doing, you know, your budget and you know how much you can save and over time you build up so you have emergency money. Now, you don't have to have all of the emergency money set aside at once, but you certainly you should have some. Ideally, it's like four to six months in terms of what your monthly expenses are. Once you've established, OK, so I'm, I'm good. I have disposable income, you know, I'm paying my bills and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about investing because I'm properly positioned, then the, the right time would be at that time. What you also have to, to figure out is exactly where the market is and what's happening. So I know there's some people that think they can time the market as in time. So like right now, the market has been going trending downwards. So maybe it can go further. So they might be waiting to catch the bottom, but sometimes that's not the best approach. The best approach is, is having time in the market versus timing the market. So time in the market is more important than trying to time the market because you can miss out on opportunities. Um, again, a word of caution. That's not to say if you see a night free fall and you know, if just, you know, if you think, OK, when someone gives you their professional opinion and someone that you trust who is an expert says, listen, maybe today is not the day, maybe next week may be better. Or maybe, you know, maybe just let the market settle a little bit. Not today is not that day to invest. Literally, today may not be that day to invest. That's fine. 
um, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, but sitting to try and time the market and just waiting and waiting, that also um, could be, you know, you can miss out on opportunities. Are you hearing me? You're on mute. Ah, uh, yes, 2022. Um, I was just seeing, <laughs> seeing you saying something. You can hear me now, right? I'm hearing you now. Okay, awesome. So this is another difficult and complex um, uh, question came in from our registrar's attendees. How much money do you need to start investing? Because, you know, you may have we have multiple currencies in our audience. So you have, you know, TT equivalent of a 10,000 has different value to, to Barbados and even, you know, 10,000 is nothing compared to Jamaica. So what exactly, what is, what, what, what's the factors there to decide how much money am I going to invest in? A good question. And, and here's, here's what you start with what you have because they're different investment products. So I, I spoke about um, stocks. There are products like a mutual fund, which is a basket of stocks. So just think about, so, so see the brands that I put up on the, on the screen. Let's think about a pool of, uh, a basket of stock, uh, stocks and investors pooling their money together and someone managing the money on your be behalf. So let's say everybody who is on the live right now, we pooled our money and somebody manages on our behalf. That's kind of how a mutual fund works. And those, some of those funds start as little as a hundred TT dollars. That should put some perspective. I know there are different currencies, but you can start with investing, having access via a mutual fund to stocks indirectly on different stock exchanges, because there's some companies, um, cross-listed companies that are listed on our stock exchange, as well as some of our companies are listed on the Jamaican Stock Exchange. So you have access to stocks, not directly saying buying an individual stock, but through a basket of stocks. If you have $100 and you did that consistently, whether you saved 100 every week, which you know, sometimes people think $100 is no money, actually over time, $100 you'd be surprised what that adds up to. You literally, you'd be surprised. So you start with what you have. If you have a thousand dollars, that's what you start with. Because so it, if after you said, listen, okay, so I have emergency money and I have, you know, I have, I, I have sufficient, say, insurance, say you had term life insurance and you have, you know, you, money set aside, you're thinking about your retirement. Let's say you comfortable with that. You don't have much debt. You don't have any credit card debt. Well, if you, and by the way, if you have credit card debt, clear off your credit card bill before you start to invest. Because that's very, it's, it's very expensive debt. So if you have credit card debt, you probably want to clear that off before you start investing. So if you have $1,000, you start with that. If you have 5000 that's what you start with. Once you are properly positioned, as in you have some funds for emergency, you're not going to have to sell this investment that you're making because you know, an emergency happens and now you're taking money from your investment to deal with an emergency. So if it's 5,000 you have, you start with that. If you have 10,000, start with that. You work with what you have, and you know, not thinking about, and, and but be committed on a consistent basis so that every month that's what you want to be doing, contributing. And when you get a lump sum, that's a great time to also make a big lump sum contribution or push money into investing for long-term um, things that would benefit you versus instant gratification, which is easy to do. You can find yourself spending a lot of money if you know you run into a lot of money sometimes that you have that excitement to spend on things that you probably wouldn't spend on, which is, you know, I think you just find the balance, find that sweet spot in terms of, you know, having a good time, being comfortable, but also taking care of your future. So and that I have a, a question actually from um, a small business owner perspective because you know n some people actually made out positively in the green for COVID and with that they saw um, access to funds 
Um, and you may be in this conundrum as a business owner to be like, hmm, do I invest more into the business to get more money? Or is this an opportunity for me to use that money to invest in stocks? What would be your suggestion there? Yeah, good question. I mean, because it, it depends on the kind of return that you're looking at. So if I, I said to you, well, okay, you know, the return, the long term return on stocks was 8%. So again, it's just being diversified, but your business, again, you're looking at, okay, I have, how am I positioned? But it's very important to know whatever the business is. If putting funds in the business is going to advance the business so that you are really be now becoming more profitable than any long run, then you have more money to set aside and more money to invest, then that's the decision that you make. So it's really finding the balance there. It's difficult to know in, unless you do really have a forensic in terms of looking at exactly what the numbers are. But I would say, put, you know, there's some, but either way, that's an investment. Either way, you're not taking the money and spending it on a trip to Miami or spending it to play, you know, to do whatever. You take any money to reinvest in the business. You're not investing in stocks, but it certainly is an investment. Because remember, the conversation started is committing resources to something, some endeavor with the hope or, or the uh, for a positive return. So either or, um, it just depends on what kind of return you're looking for and what the outlook is for the business. The outlook for your business maybe today may be far more favorable today or in the next six months than the stock market. Then you put the money into your business because you know you can turn a profit. Uh, quicker. And once you start generating more money, then there's, there's always opportunities to invest in stocks. There's always opportunities. That is a great point there. Uh, and, and in that same sort of thought process, you know, depending on where you're watching this from, like for instance, in Trinidad, we have a Forex issue. US is, you know, something that we all are like, ah, let's get it. Um, and you know, some of the other islands, because you rely on tourism, it's not as, um, you have more access to it. So from an investment perspective, what are the benefits, if possible, to invest in U.S. stocks? Oh, yeah, okay. So the U.S. stock market uh, is far more sophisticated than our regional stock markets. There's a lot more options out there. Uh, hundreds or thousands of companies. So if you have an opportunity to get hard currency, which I know is difficult, um, the hard currency from the onset is a, it's a hedge against our local currency. So you tend to see hard currency appreciating um, against our currency and local, I mean, currencies in any region. So if you do have access to US dollars, that's an opportunity to diversify your portfolio. It doesn't mean that you don't invest in the Trinidad stock market or Belgian stock market or Jamaican stock market because there are huge opportunities in our regional stock markets as well as there are opportunities in the US stock market. So it's an opportunity to have a blended approach. So you take some, you know, have some in US, in US stocks, which is, again, it's investing. Great opportunity to invest like locally great opportunity to invest if you don't have access to, to US dollars. So you can have a hybrid approach because chances are if you run into a very large amount of TT dollars, uh, you're not going to get that converted into US dollars very easily. Probably not, right? Unless you're paying an exorbitant price fit possible or you have some kind of link um, or avenue to get it. So in the meantime, when you're working on trying to get US dollars and you're probably not going to get all the US dollars that you want, you put your, put your capital to work in the regional stock markets. And when you get a chance and you have access to US, by, by all means, definitely, um, you open a brokerage account, just as you open a bro you know, you need to have a brokerage account to be able to buy, to purchase stocks on the US stock markets or any international stock market. We actually have an interesting question um, in that same American space is, can American companies be listed on the local exchange in Trinidad and Tobago? Okay, and that's, a, 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 that's if a company has the desire. So there's a process to, be, to list um, as if they want to, and if they meet the criteria, but um, companies tend, generally tend to list um, in the region where they are. 
so I'll, I'll ask the question, what would be the impetus or why would a US company want to list on, on the Trinidad Stock Exchange? They may, um, and if they do, there's a process that they would have to go through and if they meet the criteria. Um, any, any, so it says so to list on a stock exchange as a criteria, and once you meet the criteria, then you can list. Okay, uh, and let's go into this trending conversation that I am none the wiser on, and that's crypto. Um, I, I am not, you know, I feel like it, it's similar to America. I just don't get it. Um, so how does crypto affect the stock market in the Caribbean? Crypto doesn't, well, there's, crypto wouldn't affect the stock market um, in the Caribbean. Crypto is a separate, totally separate asset to, to stocks. So in terms of if there's any impact, if at all, it may, let's just say everybody wanted to invest in crypto and no longer wanted to invest in stocks, then I guess that would be a problem, but that's not the case. Um, so there's no correlation there with crypto and our local stock market, at least not that I know of. What I would say in terms of crypto and the international markets, crypto is considered a risky asset. Um, and a risky asset doesn't mean that it's a not a good asset. Stocks are considered a risky asset as well. So what happens in a time when there's extreme volatility, meaning stocks going up and down and there's fear in the market and anxiety, which is a lot of fear now, risky assets get punished a lot more than safer assets. So you tend to find people moving out of the stock market and moving into the bond market. So it's a transfer of capital. It's like a flight to, cap to, 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 flight to quality or flight to safety. So in a time like this, like right now, you would see last week, a couple of weeks ago, crypto currencies were trending downwards. Um, I am not a crypto expert. What I what I would say is there are many coins or many different cryptocurrencies and in the long run it's just the the it's who can withstand the test on, on which coins remain because there are thousands of them out there. Um, and some have value and some have don't don't have value. So again it's having the information, speaking to someone who's an expert who will tell you, okay, listen, I think this is, you know, this is a good case here. This is a good investment for these reasons, not just buying a uh, cryptocurrency that you think because it's worth some sense today and it's going to be worth thousands of dollars tomorrow or next year. Just without any analysis or any basis, that's a problem. The reason why there's a lot of excitement around crypto is because of the returns that were that was generated, um, which is fine. That's good, uh, but be very, very careful. And if you are going to do it, buy the, you know, buy the ones that you, you know, the, the mainstays, and and just know, or what you what what is perceived to be um, a blue chip or mainstay, and be prepared to hold for the long haul. If you don't have the capacity to withstand heavy movements, lots of very sharp movements, then crypto is probably not for you. You're thinking about the returns and the big returns, but if you can't stomach, and I'm telling you this because I've had one or two friends who invested in crypto, um, and some did well and some did, some were punished brutally, just depends. And if you, uh, if, as I said, if you could withstand and you're in it for the long haul and long is anything past, you know, three to five years and beyond. That's long term. Not trying to put money in today to get it back at, you know, the end of the year or to get it back, you know, sometime early next year. It is that could be problematic because there's a lot, a lot of volatility with crypto currencies. I had a friend um, ask me about this and I said, I'm barely trying to figure out my credit card. So I don't mm -hmm. think I'll be adding that to the mix. Let me just figure out what this percentage means first and then I'll get back to you because <laughs> I'm still trying to figure this out. Oh, um, <laughs> so mm -hmm. we've, we've shared a wealth of knowledge and I want to put you on the spot with the last question here. Um, if someone has the disposable income as well as the access to American stock market, 
what advice would you give? Because we also have this desire as Caribbean people to, you know, give back and invest in the Caribbean, but sometimes that may not necessarily be the best bet for money. So what advice would you give to somebody who says, okay, I want to look at Trinidad and Jamaica, but then I'm like, hmm, American might be better. That, that they favor in the US stock market. That's again, that's fine. You know, that's as an investor, again, you looking, you saying, because this is what, this is what you have to think about. How is the Trinidad economy performing? Then that's going to give you an idea of how the stock market is going to perform. How is the US stock market performing? It's going to give you an idea of how the US stock market or any stock market. Um, also, you're looking at the size of the economy um, and what the long term trend has been. But if you are looking to invest in the US stock market, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. What I would say, the US stock market is far more liquid. Um, it's a lot more fluid than our stock market. So our stock prices tend to be sticky. Sometimes when I say sticky, sometimes there's not much, there's not the kind type of movement that you would see sometimes in the US stock market. Like right now, you wouldn't see that with our stock market. So you have, again, you have to be prepared to just stomach the ride. And not because a company, you buy a stock and it goes down, it means it's a bad company. It just means that the stock is performing relative to how the economic cycle is performing or maybe some kind of news that the market is interpreting in a particular way or some kind of economic news comes out. The market, the US stock markets and international stock markets respond very um, quickly to economic data. So a jobs number would come out on tomorrow, let's say Friday, they're counting or looking to see how many jobs were created over the month. The stock market will respond to that. Our market is not like that. Our data is, you know, we get data a lot later. Uh, so it's very, very different. But definitely, if you have access to, to US dollars, you should go for it. And, I, and, I, and I, I'll tell you what, the reason why you should be thinking about the US stock market now uh, is because of how, where it's at. So it, it could very well present some very good buying opportunities, valuable companies um, that you remember we spoke about buying a dollar for 50 cents. So you may have the opportunity to buy some valuable companies at some discounted prices. So if you have US, you go for it. You open a brokerage account and you go for it. Just make sure that you're getting the correct advice. Um, to point you in the right direction. Don't just go and because uh, that that could be that will be problematic and invest in a company because somebody gave you a tip. Somebody tells you they, they feel as though this is going to happen with no basis for why the stock is going to perform in the future. So you're telling me if I just I just need to sign up to Robinhood and put everything there? Well, Robinhood is a platform, but what you, you, I mean, so you could buy, you could still buy valuable companies on, on Robinhood, but I mean, the platform is obviously now, it's a lot of newcomers, it's young people, as the future, possibly, the future, future investor, possibly. Um, so if you, even if you go on to Robinhood, you still have the opportunity to buy a solid company. So it doesn't, um, it's not, it's less about, yeah, which, it's less about which, platform you use. The platform you use tells, will let you know what kind of service you get in, you know, what kind of data they give you, what kind of information, and that can vary. Um, what's very important is what you investing in and what you're going to hold in your account. The platform just gives you access to thousands of companies, so thousands of investments. Question is, what do you invest in? Yeah, that's, that's, it, it seems like it, it's like a second job, you know, trying to find all that information. So what advice would you have to, for an entrepreneur who may feel overwhelmed by all this information, but has this desire to explore stocks? Speak to a financial advisor. Speak to a financial advisor. Follow Phil the Gap. Follow Phil the Gap. Speak to someone who can point you in the right direction. No, seriously, that's what you want to do. And if it's not filling up, it's someone who can guide you in the right direction, not just on a, you know, yeah, let's do this. It's going to triple, it's going to quadruple. I'm telling you, you're going to get rich. Yeah, this is it. No, that's not it. More than likely. That's problems. Heartache and pain.
I I definitely understand and completely respect folks who understand money. And I think that's one of the things that we have, especially now in this day and age where we see a few YouTube videos and we think we're experts, right? We think that we can do everything. But, you know, this idea of, well, I just watch two YouTubes and now I'm expert. <laughs> what say you to that? <laughs> So oh, you have to you have to have skin in the game like anything else. So you have to have skin in the game, and it's going to take time. I know when people hear that, but it just doesn't work like that. Anything that is worth it, and again, if you don't have the time to do it on your own, that's okay. So you take the time to learn. If not, some let someone guide you. Let someone. That's an investment advisor, a financial advisor, somebody to give you access to finan proper financial education. That is what you do. Yeah, so don't let it be, if anything at all. I think that there's, that is usually the misconception that you know the market is so daunting and things are so, it's so difficult. It's, it's, it is not. It is not once someone is assisting you. It is not once you determine to just take some time, whether it's daily or weekly, to position yourself, do some reading, um, to make the right choices for yourself. You can either do it that way, or you can start with someone helping you and then branch off and just do it on your own. Because over time you will get better. Awesome. But you, have, but you, have, you have to have skin in the game. You can't just watch a video and be an expert. It don't work like that. But you know what? Deep down, you know it don't work like that. You're just hoping that it does. And deep down, you know this is not it, but you're just hoping. You're gambling. But you shouldn't gamble with your money. You should never gamble with your money. Yeah, I I, I said every day in my job. So I think I think that's on that note. I want to say thank you so much, Phil, because it has been uh, quite a whirlwind of emotions for individuals during this pandemic and being on a lockdown. You can tend to get into this vortex of social media and the reality is actually quite different to what you're consuming on your phone. So I hope that this session helped you. I put the LinkedIn um, to fill the gap page on the Q&A section so you could follow him there as well as you can just Google him and he will pop up. So thank you so much to Phil for sharing his insight and thank you everyone for joining us today. So have a good one. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye everyone. You too. Take care. Bye bye.